Hello, my name is Beth Dixon and this is a video presentation on interpreting histograms. Thanks to Vicki Borlaug for the use of her PowerPoint to make this video. First, I will cover a quick review of percents and some terminology that Mrs. Borlaug will use. To use percents in context, we will look at a sample of fruit. We have three apples, three bananas, for a total of six fruits. I'm going to compare the number of apples to the total number of fruit by division. So we'll have three apples over the total of six, which gives us three over six. That reduces to one half. We can change that fraction into a decimal by dividing, and just use your calculator for that, which gives us 0 0.50. Now we want to change that decimal to a percent by moving our decimal two places to the right. The decimal is between the first zero and the five, or in front of the five. We move it two places to the right, and that will give us 50% from here over two places gives us the 50 percent. Now for some terminology. The reduced form of the number is still just called the fraction. We could say that one half of the fruit is apples or that the fraction of the fruit that is apples is one half. The decimal number is called the relative number. Think of this as how the apples relate to the rest of the fruit. It's always written as a decimal. And of course, the last form is the percent. The percentage of fruits that are apples is 50%. I will start with a histogram about patients waiting time. First, look at the histogram itself. Notice the frequency along the vertical axis. That's the number that we have. Notice the waiting time in minutes along the horizontal axis. Those are the classes. Notice the total in each class. Those are the number of patients that waited this number of minutes. Make sure that you understand your histogram before you begin answering questions on it. This is the information we will use to answer the questions about this histogram. The first question wants to know what is the total number of patients. To get this, we will simply add up the frequency in each class. 2 plus 4 plus 10 plus 20, plus 8, plus 12, plus 6, plus 4, to get 66. The second question asks, what is the class with the lowest frequency? That would be this class that we've highlighted in red. It has the lowest number and the smallest height. But look at what the question is asking. The question is asking for the class. It is not asking for the frequency or how many. So our answer will not be two, but the class, the number of minutes that these two patients waited. So the answer will be four to six. The patient, two patients only had to wait four to six minutes. So we use the waiting times to describe the class. The second question says, what is the class with the highest frequency? That will be the tallest bar, the one with the largest number on top. But again, it's asking for the class. So the answer is 13 to 15 minutes. 
How many patients waited between 22 and 24 minutes? Well, that's the minutes, so that'll be along the vertical axis and will be this bar here. But the question is asking how many? So the answer is six. The second question is not asking how many or which class. It's asking for a percent. So to get the percent, we will need to convert that answer or that number of six into a percent. And remember to compare it, we always compare the number to the total. So we'll compare the number between 22 and 24 to the total number of patients. That will give us 6 divided by 66. Use your calculator to change that into a decimal and we'll get 0 0.091. In this case we want our percents to be accurate to one decimal place so we'll round this to three decimal places and moving our decimal over two places we'll get 9.1 percent. How many patients waited longer than 18 minutes? Why is this question a little bit more difficult? Because longer than 18 minutes involves more than one class. As you look at your classes, which classes involve longer than 18 minutes? Well, 16 to 18 is not longer than 18 minutes. We would not include that, but we would include 19 to 21 and 22 to 24 minutes and 25 to 27 minutes. So that would be 12 plus 6 plus 4, which would give us 22. And part B of this, what percent of patients waited longer than 18 minutes? Since it's the same group, the number would be 22, but we would compare that 22 to the total number of patients, which would be 66. 22 divided by 66 gives us 0.333, again rounding to three decimal places, so that when I move my decimal over two places, I'm accurate to one decimal place, 33.3%. Let's look at question 5. How many patients waited less than 13 minutes? We can include 13 to 15 because 13 is not less than 13. So it will be the first three groups all waited less than 13 minutes. That will be 2 plus 4 plus 10. That will give us 16. And then for the percent of patients who waited less than 13 minutes, we'll take the number less than 13 divided by the total number of patients, 16 divided by 66. That will give us 0.242. Change to a decimal gives us 24.2%. We can also complete a table with the class frequency and relative frequency and percent frequency from the histogram. The classes are filled from the horizontal axis. And I'm not going to sit here and read those for you. It'll just be the 4 to 6, 7 to 9, all the way up to the 25 to 27. The frequency will be the height of each of the bars. So we can fill those in as well. And once, once we have the class and the frequency, once we have the class and the frequency, we simply can fill in the relative frequency as we have done before. 
the relative frequency for group 1 would be 2 divided by the total. 2 divided by 66 gives us 0 0.030. And remember that the relative frequency is the relative number, which is the decimal form of that comparison. For the second class, we can either use the table or the histogram, and that's the frequency of 4 divided by the total, 4 divided by 66, which gives us 0 0.061. For the third class, that'll be 10 divided by 66, which will give us 0 0.152. Moving on to the next class, we'll get 20 divided by 66, which is 0 0.303. Moving to the next class, 8 divided by 66, which is 0 0.121. 12 divided by 66, which is 0 0.182. 6 divided by 66, which is 0 0.091. And for the last group, I get 4 divided by 66, which is 0 0.061. And I've completed the relative frequency. Now it's time to look at the percent frequency. To get the percent frequency, you change the relative frequency to a percent. I have covered this in more detail in another video, so for this one, I, we will just quickly fill in the table by converting all of those to percents, and I have filled in the percents. I've already passed the 12 minute mark, but I didn't want to do this one in two videos, so I will conclude this one with the exercises and some questions that you can answer about this histogram. Remember to pause the video if you need to. I'm not expecting you to answer it in the little time that I give in between. If you would like the answers to these, please contact me in the Mathematics Learning Lab or email me at beth.dixon at ws.edu and I will gladly help you with these problems. Ms. Borlaug does use these as quiz problems, so I, help is available in the Math Lab. I hope these examples were helpful.